Aubrey, we are getting very specific today about IELTS overall trends. Aubrey, for our audience, in case they don't know, what is this and who uses it? Where does it go on IELTS? Yes, in your academic task one essay, you have like charts or graphs or that you're that you're describing, and you must include an overall picture of what happens. We call it the overall trend. You have to have that in your essay mm -hmm. to show overall what's happening in these graphs or these charts. If you don't include it, it really affects your task score and you're probably going to get a low score on your task one essay. Yes. So we have these things called ceilings um, on the IELTS scoring rubrics and they are bold statements in some boxes <laughs> on the scoring rubric. Now, if this bold statement is met or not met in some circumstances, then it's called a ceiling because if you don't do this one thing, you cannot get higher than this specific score. So overall trend is a ceiling, guys. If you don't have an overall trend in your academic task one essay, you cannot get higher than a five for task. Like that's huge. You That's are making huge. the examiner's job super easy if you don't have an overall trend because they're like, oh, well, I don't even have to really think about the task score. Like it's a five. Right. It doesn't even matter if you shared all the important numbers. Yeah. I don't even have to exactly. check. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> um, so guys, in Three Keys IELTS, we make this super easy. All right. Because I know like Aubrey coming into IELTS for the first time. I remember when I came into IELTS for the first time, academic task one makes zero sense. And so for students, it must be the same way. Like how, what, what is an overall trend? What am I scored on? What is the, what are these numbers? So in Three Keys IELTS, we make it super easy, right? Yes. And that is so vital that it's very systematic, very simple and clear because you just don't have time to waste on coming up with your overall trend. It needs to be something you can do in a matter of seconds. Exactly. And with our strategies, you can do that. And unfortunately, we do see a lot of students that know they need an overall trend, yeah. but unfortunately will make a mistake with it, right? They will do something that makes it very still low scoring or yeah. problematic. And that's what we're talking about today. Exactly. One that we saw in one of our students' essays, we want to make sure you guys avoid this problem. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So um, just a, a couple tips before we look at that problematic overall trend and explain how to do it correctly. A couple tips, guys. If, um, if you are writing a change over time essay, you have a graph with a lot of years. These numbers change over time. The focus is on change. That is the function of this essay. It is also the function of the overall trend. So you say overall, what changed, right? Overall, this had the biggest change. Overall, this had like zero change, whatever. No numbers in the overall trend, though. That's another really important tip. No numbers. All the numbers go in the body. If it's a static essay, you are comparing. Um, there's only one year or two years, right? And the function is comparing, and that is the overall trend, right? Overall, this is um, the biggest, right? That's it. You're comparing. That is the superlative, right? Um, so keep that in mind, guys, as we go through uh, two issues here. So Aubrey, what is the first problematic overall trend? Yeah, the first problem is to be too general, right? If you are not sharing specifically what changed, you're not really providing that overall idea, that overall picture of what's in those charts. So let me give an example from a student essay. This task one had two pie charts that were showing what technological devices were used over the span of a decade in 2009 and then in 2019. And what the student wrote for their overall trend was overall with a technological change, customer preferences changed dramatically. And if you look at this, it's so general. It's just saying there was a big change. That's I've not enough. That's not giving me any information exactly. about these pie charts and what changed overall. I've seen this so many times, guys. Like, honestly, yeah. this is the number one way students mess up the overall trend. It's like you come into IELTS, you learn that you have to have an overall trend and you kind of understand what it is. And then this is how it goes wrong, right? It's too, you can't be too general and you can't be too specific. There's like this Goldilocks sweet spot right. for an overall trend that you have to hit. Okay. So this is too general. Yeah. It's not giving me, it's not really telling me anything about the numbers. Right. And that's the thing. You have to tell me something about the numbers. Um, exactly. You need to say, 
what changed or exactly. how it changed, exactly. right? Without giving specific numbers, those right. will come in the body paragraphs, but you do have to tell me what changed and where all the student has said in this overall trend is that information changed exactly way too general it's not going to work i cannot tell you how many times i've seen this yeah, in an overall very trend common. right and so there is an overall trend here like it says overall and you're trying to do a trend some examiners might still consider a six for task because it's kind of an overall like trend, trend. Right. but really like it should not count as an overall trend because you're because it's not giving me that function so that would still get a five for task okay so let's teach our students how to make this better um so again we are talking about an overall trend for a question with two pie charts 2009, 2019, some students look at this, they see, oh, there's two years, I'm gonna make it change over time. Don't do that. <laughs> there's not enough changing over not enough times. This is about comparing, so it's a static graph, right? So that's how we're gonna do our overall trend. So what is the best overall trend for this type of question? Right, so you could say, overall, in 2009, most people consumed media on a conventional TV, while a decade later, a majority of view viewers utilized a flat screen TV. So you see, there are no numbers. Yes, the dates, we need to you know, share a date here, but we're just using these, the items, right? Mm -hmm. Conventional TV and flat screen TVs without saying how many people used each. Right. We're sharing an overall trend for those which were the highest in 2009 and the highest in 2019. And that's all you got to do, guys. Keep it simple, right? It is functional. Um, again, we're going to give you one more problem we've seen lately with an overall trend, but just to summarize, guys, your overall trend for a static essay. Static is about comparing. And so let's think about like, we can think about this grammatically comparing it is like er and est right comparatives and superlatives and so that is that's what you're doing in the body like this is the highest this is the lowest this is bigger this is smaller um but that's also the overall trend so the overall trend is superlative in a chain in a static essay right so this is the biggest we say the most people da 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 the majority of viewers da 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 those are superlatives okay all right now what might be another problem um with the overall trend yeah so another problem is we might see students that put one overall trend for one of the graphs in a body paragraph mm, why would this be a problem jessica so again if we're talking about a question with two graphs your overall trend has to cover both graphs okay because think about the word overall right it's not a half overall trend wait it's not a half trend. It's an overall. Right. It's not an over that, half trend. That removes trend. the overall <laughs> aspect, right? If you're sharing the trend for half of the information, all of a sudden there's no overall. Exactly. Overall's out the window. Yeah. Thank you for translating my weird <laughs> brain. You're welcome. Um, so here's the deal, guys. I just had a class. And I was reading the student's introduction and there wasn't an overall trend there. And that's so automatically I'm like explaining, if you don't have an overall trend, you're going to have to get a five for task. And then they're like, well, no, but I have one. It's just in the body. So problem number one, examiner doesn't see it right away. That's a problem. It makes my job harder. Problem number two, if I'm reading the second paragraph and I see a little overall trend there, it's only about one of the graphs. Okay, so you're missing out on the whole half of the question. So again, that doesn't count as an overall trend. You're only describing one thing in the question. Um, so and you can that's see how issue. it would be it would be really disorganized as well if the overall trend in a body paragraph talked about both charts. The fact that it's in a body paragraph, this is very disorganized yeah. because only half that information is covered in that body paragraph. So this this is very disorganized that will affect yeah. your coherence cohesion score totally and last thing guys about the score your cohesion coherence score in order to get a seven or higher you do have to have clear paragraphs right so the only way to do that um, is to have an introduction with two sentences okay you have to have at least two sentences or it's not a paragraph it's just a sentence right so sometimes i'll see like uh an essay with one sentence rephrasing the test question and then there's like another 
sentence like spaced out below it <laughs> that's an overall trend and then there's like a full paragraph below that guys that's not good paragraphing it's not balanced so here's what you do in your introduction paragraph sentence number one rephrase the test question you got to paraphrase don't copy it second sentence in your introduction is your overall trend okay that's how you organize it makes the examiner's job easier <laughs> it makes it real clear that you deserve higher scores like automatically Yes. I have a feeling that some of you listeners have listened to this episode and feel like, I feel like there's so much more I need to know about writing the task one. And you are right. <laughs> you are and so <laughs> I just want to share, we just transferred our IELTS course over to an amazing platform. So good. It's updated. It's amazing. And you're not wrong. There are so many strategies for each of the essays, task one and task two, whether you're taking general or academic and all of the other modules. And what really will help is a systematic program that takes you through these modules, gives you all of the examples. You see the essay written, example essays, just everything you need, all of the strategies you need for IELTS. So if you feel that, if you feel like, I feel like there's more I need to know here. We can only give you so much in these short episodes, right? You get to get into our course. Exactly, exactly. Um, you could even find out what score you would get if you took IELTS now. Um, and then from there, get into the course as well. Go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. And remember, our new course, guys, has lifetime access. So even if you're not taking the exam soon, get in now, right? Start preparing. So um, yeah, start at allearsenglish.com slash my score. Or get straight into the course, go to allearsenglish.com slash K-E-Y-S. And remember, every student now, every student, including you listening, you will get personalized feedback on your final speaking and writing. That scores, detailed advice, corrections, and that is for every student in our course now. So go to allearsenglish.com slash K-E-Y-S for that brand new, shiny, updated Three Keys course. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.